Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about simple carb control. It's for people who don't have to go to the extreme of carb counting. And that might be the case with somebody with type 2 diabetes, or it might be a type 1 who just simply cannot do that. It's too complicated, or they're not motivated, or for whatever reason. We have to have backups that are still going to make a difference. So this module provides simple tools and tips to manage carbohydrate portions. These strategies are often all that you need with type 2 diabetes to improve blood glucose control, but it's a fallback for somebody with type 1 who cannot, will not, or for some reason does not count carbohydrates. So the objectives are to name three visual tools that can be provided to patients to help them control carbohydrate portions, and to list two benefits of eating higher fiber foods, and explain why most people with diabetes should limit or entirely in avoid liquid concentrated carbohydrates like soda. So carbohydrate management, the first strategy when you meet somebody that's newly diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, for example, is to find out, are they skipping breakfast? Are they skipping lunch? The people that skip a meal earlier in the day tend to eat too much later in the day. And the meal at dinner time is just too much volume, too much carbohydrate, and the blood sugar goes up the highest that time of day, which also tends to coincide with when they're watching TV, maybe not as active as when they're out during the day. So the first strategy is to simply say, let's try to spread the food out between three meals, four to six hours apart takes about four hours to digest a balanced meal, and by having a meal four to six hours apart, you're getting a more even rise and fall in the blood sugar. Snacks are up to them. Some people want to have six little mini meals, that's fine, or three meals and a snack, that's fine. We work with people individually. Increasing fibrous foods using whole grains like brown rice, quinoa, steel-cut oats, legumes and beans, blunts the blood glucose rise because the food is digesting slower, it's entering the bloodstream slowly over time so the blood glucose doesn't rise as steeply. And for people who are diet controlled, they're not taking insulin necessarily like a type two, um, that's gonna make a big difference in keeping their blood sugars managed. It also has the benefit of increasing satiety. If you have foods that are digesting more slowly over time, you're not going to feel hungry as soon. You might not be looking for as many snacks, and that can be a weight management strategy as well. It's also important to just put some limits on sweets and desserts. Now, it's fine if you can look at a package and say, oh, this cookie has 10 grams of carbohydrate. That's reasonable. But I've looked at restaurant menus and seen carbohydrates such as flan, 123 grams of carb, or a brownie with ice cream and caramel sauce, 200 grams of carbohydrate. Those things are gonna be way too much. So it's not that people can't have any desserts, it's choosing wisely, giving them some ideas that might be manageable. Avoiding liquid sugar, for the most part, is gonna be a wise thing to do, especially if you're not injecting insulin, you're just trying to manage blood sugars by eating the right foods. Even if you are injecting insulin, it's an issue because the liquid carbs get in before the insulin as we talked about in the Beyond Carb Counting lecture. There would be times and places for including a modest amount, a reasonable amount of juice. For example, somebody's riding bike, has type 1 diabetes, the water bottle in the bike's half juice, half water, and over the 10 miles that they're going, they're sipping a little at a time to prevent a low. There are times that it works. So portion control strategies include the plate method, the hand method, and just simply eating less, reducing serving sizes. The benefits are both blood glucose control and many times weight management strategies are um, also going to give you that benefit. So I think you've seen this before in previous lectures, um, but I wanted to just touch on the plate method. It's at www.myplate.gov. There's a lot of information. You can pull off that patient education handouts. You can download all the way from toddlers through adults and into pregnancy for balanced meal planning. In general, this has replaced the food pyramid by the USDA. And the plate method can also help control carbohydrates because the fruits and the grains and the milk are the things that have carbohydrate. And if you take a dinner plate and you divide it in half, half the plate is fruits and vegetables. And as shown, a little bit more vegetables than fruit is recommended generally. And then grains 
and protein on the other half of the plate and dairy products, perhaps milk on the side. It's not a half a plate of grains. So if you're following this guideline, you do get some control in the portion sizes. The hand method is very simple and sometimes my elderly patients or my type twos um, who don't need carb counting, we just need to give them a visual and they're not carrying measuring cups around with them. Um, starch the size of your own fist. So a woman, well my fist is about a cup and that would be a reasonable amount of carbohydrate. If I was counting carbs, I know a cup of rice is 45 grams, my goal might be 45 or 60 at a meal. It turns out that if you have a six foot two man who weighs 250 pounds and his hand is bigger, well he deserves and needs a bigger portion of starch. So it's a simple guideline. Have starch the size of your fist, whether it's a baked potato or a bowl of rice or pasta. It's reasonable. In terms of protein, protein does not raise your blood glucose like meat. However, it is a food that has cholesterol and oftentimes saturated fat. And our type twos were trying to control their weight. Often type twos have a constellation of issues. They have obesity, they have hyperlipidemia, they have hypertension, they have other problems. So these guidelines can help with that as well. So lean protein, the size and thickness of the palm of their own hand is good advice. I give them a list that says everything on this sheet is a lean meat or lean protein. Another sheet for medium fat and high fat to help guide the choices. In terms of added fats, whether that's salad dressing or sour cream or butter, having some sort of a limit, like such as the size of your own thumb, instead of half a stick of butter and a baked potato, just having some visual guidance on what the portion size might be can go a long ways in controlling cal caloric intake as well. So there would be no limit on leafy green salads, raw vegetables, non-starchy, you know, steamed or cooked vegetables either. And then encouraging a small fruit, meaning the size of a tennis ball to a baseball, um, or having a cup of milk if you'd like. And that can often be with a meal, but it could just as easily be between meals and having the fruit between meals. Speaking of visuals, I wanted to pull up this slide and say, you know, take a look at it and just honestly, is your eye drawn to one or the other? Does one look larger than the other? But in fact, they're the exact same size. It's kind of an optical illusion. And the same thing works when you're using plates at home. A dinner plate, or a salad plate. These plates both have the same exact amount of food on them, but the salad plate looks so much fuller and it seems like you're eating more. Nobody wants to see a tiny little portion in the middle of their big plate. So simply smaller portions of the same foods that they're eating can also help. The liquid carbohydrate issue. So if you look across this list, there's a variety of things that have carbohydrate in a liquid form. The smallest can gives you an equivalent of about six teaspoons of sugar. A soda, it doesn't matter if it's 7-Up, Coke, Mountain Dew, whatever it is, they're usually at least nine teaspoons of sugar per can. Um, something bigger like a Slurpee, 16 ounce Slurpee, might be more like 12 teaspoons. And those coffee drinks have a lot more than people realize in terms of calories and in carbohydrate. Now, so many people think once they're diagnosed with anything that they should start drinking more juice for some reason. They go out and buy juicers and you know they're, it's ingrained in them that oh juice is a healthy thing. Well in fact the thing that has the most carbohydrates on this page is the natural juice and I'm not picking on any brands. They're all the same. Whether you have a half a cup of orange juice fresh squeezed or a half a cup of grapefruit juice which doesn't even taste sweet or a half a cup of a cola. They have the exact same amount of carbohydrate equivalent sugars. So 15 teaspoons roughly of natural sugar per 16 ounces of juice. It's very high. So in 2014, the American Diabetes Association came out with a pretty firm stance on this and they say people with diabetes should avoid sugar sweetened beverages. And there may be a time and a place, such as treating low blood sugar. They do raise your blood sugar quickly, so when you're low, they're good choices, but never these portions. You only need about four to six ounces. Not only are these liquid concentrated carb sources high in carbohydrate, for example, this chocolate shake has 139 grams of carbohydrate. This also has 783 calories. And a lot of people in our country are suffering with the obesity one third of our population of adults are obese 
another third overweight, and one third are normal weights. And when you look at a population, um, a lot of calories for many people are coming from um, pretty empty calories in their, in their sugar-sweetened beverages. So in summary, diet control is a foundation treatment in type 2 diabetes. While carb counting isn't always imperative, carb portion control is. Simple strategies such as portion control using the plate method, the hand method, um, avoiding liquid carbohydrates such as juice and soda can significantly improve blood glucose control for people with diabetes, whether they have type 1 or type 2. And remember, the reason we're doing this is that blood glucose control prevents or reduces the risk of complications.